um, Ed Martin. Um, he's also the president of the Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. He's going to lead us in a prayer to begin the evening. Thank you, Joanna. And um, where's one of those guys? Go next door and tell them to be quiet, will you? Seriously. We're going to pray over there. Come on over and pray, or you can pray where you are. But if you don't come over and quiet down, we're going to just pray for you. Uh, so first, as we begin, let me just say thank you to Joanna Miller. The night will go so fast and so upside down because we have so many great things and so many great kids. And uh, Santa crashed the party. I told him it was early, but he you know, here he is. I said, so three more weeks, but here he is. So, uh, But I want to thank Joanna Miller, and I particularly want to thank President Trump, who, I don't know, a month ago said to Joanna, who works with him closely, I want you to stay in D.C. and help these folks that are working on helping the January 6th. He said he didn't care uh, what else was happening, running for president, anything, help. And Joanna's been doing a yeoman's work. So thank you to Joanna Miller and to President Trump for doing that. Okay, we're going to start by praying, and, I, and the first thing we're going to pray for is patience because our speakers are coming and going and canceling and changing and not coming into town. Uh, Steve Bannon, you may have heard, is going to Skype in, and there's a lot going on in his life, and uh, uh, so we're just grateful for all that's happening. So we're, let's turn now uh, to the Lord, if you will, please. Lord, we turn now in this room with so many gathered, and we offer our prayers of thanksgiving. We thank you for all that you've given us in this room. We thank you for all of our families. And we thank you for those that are missing from this room who we think about and we worry about and we just miss. And Lord, we ask you in a special way to bless the children in this room and the children across the country who miss their dads and miss their moms. In a special way, Lord, we ask you to bless them and come down and touch them with your grace Touch them with the peace in your heart and inspire them, Lord, to know that your love is a father's love, no matter where we're separated from each other or from our families. And so we just ask you, Lord, we, we, we just thank you for the gift of these children and we ask you to bless them in a special way. Lord, we ask you to bless the men and women who stepped up to be on part of the legal team. We ask you to bless them in their, in their efforts and their wisdom. Lord, we ask you to bring wisdom to the judges and the prosecutors that they stop this and that they move on and that they find other things. Lord, we ask you, we can do, you can do anything. So we plead before you like we would before the court to change these hearts and minds of these people who are doing this. We ask you to do that, Lord, and bless our lawyers. Lord, we ask you to bless uh, all those who have contributed to this effort, uh, to this effort to help the families, to help the lawyers, to help these men in prison. Just ask, we thank you, Lord, for those gifts. You can tell we're coming, Lord, with a spirit of thanksgiving, but we also come with a spirit of, of desire. And we ask you, Lord, to cut through the problems we're facing, cut through the, 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 the tumult in our families in a very, very specific way. You say when we come and pray to ask what we want, and we want that, Lord. We want our fathers, our husbands home. We want this to be over, we want it to stop, and we want them to be present. And if you can't do that now, Lord, Please help us to continue to find ways to make that clear to the men in jail. They're not prisoners, Lord. They're political prisoners, but they're men, men and husbands, dads, friends in jail away from us. And so, Lord, we ask you to continue uh, to find ways to make that happen, to bring them home. Lord, I want to lift up in a special way every one of the, the spouses here uh, uh, whether it's um, husbands and wives, but mostly wives and girlfriends and those that have been with these men. And Lord, we just ask you to bless them, continue to strengthen them. The sadness that they feel, Lord, bring it, can't make it go away, but you can bring peace. And so we come, Lord, we're asking for so much, but we know you're all powerful. And Lord, we finally finished by saying America's greatness. And I saw our brothers in, in, in we come in, I come in Christ's name, but we saw my brothers of the, of the Old Testament, Yahweh, here with us. And Lord, we know what you've taught us about when we can come together as an American nation to be good to each other and build something special. And we ask you to let that happen again. We ask you to let that happen again. We repent where we failed, and we did. We see the failure amongst our fellow citizens in these days and what's happening. But we know that you can bring the greatness again. And Lord, we ask you to do that. Bless the food we're having together. Bless what's happening today. Bless all those who are speaking. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Ed. All right. So, anyway, good evening, everyone. 
Um, my name is Joanna Miller, and I'm so thankful to be standing here with you all tonight. For those of you that don't know me, I was a former staffer in the White House, and I'm privileged to be continuing work for President Donald J. Trump for, at Save America, our great 45th and 47th President of the United States. And first off, I, I want to say a big thank you to Pro uh, Patriot Freedom Project and President Trump for allowing me to play a small role in carrying out this important mission. And our two co-hosts for the evening, Ed Martin, board member of the Patriot Freedom Project and president of the Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, and Troop Hemingway, founder of Personnel Policy Operations, who is continuing his work from the White House to ensure that all personnel are loyally carrying out President Trump's policy agenda. I'd also like to thank my dad, Robert Miller, who's here with us tonight, my mom, Elena Barrere, my sister, Carolyn Miller, and my fiance, Greg Wisher. And lastly, I'd like to thank our incredible speakers for the evening and their staff. Um, Congresswoman Green is going to be here shortly, um, and her two advisors, Dom DiBernardo and Taylor LaJoy, who actually put Patriot Freedom Project on my radar when I got hired by President Trump last March. Um, and Steve Bannon, of course, Patriot of the Year. So. <laughs> Tonight, you'll hear some heartbreaking and gut-wrenching gut stories from families that have sadly become victims of a gross, disgraceful, and evil weaponization of the U.S. Department of Justice by Joe Biden and other corrupt officials in our U.S. Congress, specifically the January 6th hoax committee. However, you will also hear from several brave leaders on how we can battle against this weaponization and, most importantly, win together for the sake of our republic. Before we begin, I'd like to say a few words about my boss, President Trump, especially when it comes to this issue. As a reminder, he too has dealt with evil weaponization of the DOJ for over six years and counting. President Trump will never give up, will never back down, and will never, ever abandon you all. And I can assure you, during his second term, he will ensure our constitutional and God-given rights are restored into our justice system. Someone who also embodies these brave characteristics and shares this bold vision is Cynthia Hughes, founder of the Patriot Freedom Project. <laughs> Patriot Freedom Project is a nonprofit organization providing legal, financial, mental health, and Christian spiritual support for many January 6 prisoners and their families, many of whom are with us tonight. If you're all able, please consider donating using the QR codes around the room. These families and children need our help. If you're all still interested in sending a Christmas gift to the children and families, visit the link listed on the flyers distributed around the room, and you will receive a follow-up email with instructions as to how to do that later on. Cynthia is joined by her two board members tonight, Ed Martin and Rachel Semmel, Communications Director for Center for Renewing America, and they too have served President Trump and our country faithfully during the 2016 campaign and throughout his first term. So without further ado, please welcome my great friends, Cynthia and Ed Martin. Ed Martin, come back. nerve-wracking, so please bear with me. Uh, even though I've done this a few times, it never uh, gets easy, and I'm learning from some of my great friends, um, Ed and Rachel and Joe and Joanna, and uh, I, I can't say enough about Joanna, and I need to, um, and, and I'm going to talk about her as the night goes on, but anybody who has this young lady in their corner is truly blessed. She is an asset to anyone um, that gets involved with her. So thank you, Joanna. I love you dearly. First, I just have to say, before I bring some of the families up here to share some things with you, and before we hear some very profound words from the great MTG, um, I have to acknowledge my husband. Long suffering. Every single woman 
in this world should have a husband like I do. I am blessed beyond words to have this man in my life. He has saved me, he has saved my children, and he has fixed all of my broken pieces. And I don't see you, baby, but wherever you are, yeah. I love you. <laughs> don't you worry, it's That's recorded. Right. You're, already, you're still in trouble. And my little big girl is here, and I love you, sweetheart. So um, I, I got involved in this. She's hiding. I got involved in this um, because um, I'm a compassionate person, and, um, and, and I saw a need in, in my own family and um, quickly learned that many others needed help, and there was really nowhere to go. And so um, I just decided to take it upon myself and, uh, and help as many as I could. Um, and and uh, as the journey continued, the Patriot Freedom Project was born, and um, I have had the support and um, honor of making some really great friends, like Joe McBride, my Ed Martin, my Nick Smith, my John Chris, my Brad Dyer, my Bill Shipley, my Hurricane, um, and all of you in here. And um, I don't want to waste time talking about me. We could do that later. Um, but I would like for no. you to meet. No, Marjorie's here. Okay. Marjorie's here. So we're gonna we're gonna pause for a minute. No, no, we're gonna introduce her. Somebody's uh, gonna introduce her. I'm gonna introduce her, okay. but I mean we're gonna pause bringing the families up. Oh yeah, we're gonna pause on the families, but we promise. And the rock star is here. <laughs> Woo -hoo! How's it going? Great to How see are you. you. Doing well. Um, so am I. Okay. So I would, I would, even though uh, this fearless warrior is standing near me, I would like to give you a brief introduction on the great MTG. Lean into that mic a little. Just lean a little. Congressman, a uh, congresswoman. I'm nervous. Please forgive me. I'm doing this, like you taught me. <laughs> Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, representing Georgia's 14th congressional district in the U.S. House of Representatives, is a mother, is a successful businesswoman, and a proud Christian. She's an economic nationalist patriot. Congresswoman Greene has been one of the most vocal activists on behalf of conservatives nationwide especially those who have fallen victim to a weaponized U.S. Department of Justice. Congresswoman Green has held press conferences and delivered speeches on the House floor on the brutal and gross treatment of January 6th defendants, and even initiated a visit to the Washington, D.C. jail with several members of Congress. Following the visit, she authored a comprehensive report. If you haven't seen it, read it, you should unusually cruel, documenting the horrible treatment of January 6 prisoners by the DOJ, including over two years of solitary confinement still ongoing, with only one hour of sunlight allowed per day, denial of access to their attorneys, still denied access to their attorneys, endlessly prolonged trial dates, critical race theory indoctrination by the DC jail, and more. She has called on her colleagues in Congress to join her in initiating an investigation into the events of January 6 to unveil the full truth as to what has happened on that day. And she is determined to help the January 6 defendants have their constitutional and God-given rights restored. Congresswoman. Green, Green, thank you. Well, thank you very much, and I'm honored to speak to all of you tonight, and I'm very happy that Santa Claus is here as well. <laughs> I've been telling people uh, here in Washington since uh, Republicans have won the majority, and we will be controlling the House of Representatives starting in January, that it's starting to feel a lot like Christmas, and I'm just thrilled to see Santa Claus. Um, but I'll give you guys a little feel of what it's like in the Capitol these days. I've been comparing it to the land of Narnia. 
And if anyone's seen the movie or knows the story, when the Ice Queen started losing her power, the ice and the snow started melting and people were smiling a little more and happier. Well, I can let you know that's what the Capitol feels like lately. Because we fired Nancy Pelosi, right? But that doesn't mean anything has changed yet. And that's, that's the reality that we're in. And I want to talk to you all about that. Um, it's been just over a year, uh, November 4th, since uh, myself and a couple of members from my staff, uh, Congressman Louie Gohmert and a couple of members of his staff were able to tour the D.C. jail. Now, that didn't just happen easily, I want you to know. Um, we spent a lot of time trying to get into the jail, uh, trying to see what was happening in there, going to the mayor's office, going to the D.C. jail. And it wasn't just me and Louie Gohmert, Matt Gates, Andy Biggs, um, and several others, Paul Gosar went with us too. And we were on the House floor voting one night, and, and I got a phone call to my office, and I was on the House floor, and it just happened to be the, the D.C. jail saying, oh, we can, we can let the Congresswoman go on a tour because the D.C. City Council was going on a tour. They gave us 15 minutes notice, by the way. So we rushed over, and if anyone doesn't understand why there weren't more with me, it was literally because we had 15 minutes notice, and Louie Gohmert was the only one able to go. And um, we went on that tour, and my request was is I wanted to see the entire jail, not just one part or another. I wanted to see all of it because I felt like I needed a good comparison of, of what the circumstances were. And I was appalled at much of it. Um, jail's not a pretty place. I, I think everyone understands that and knows that. And there, there was just not a lot of good things there. There were some great things for some of the inmates there and some of the people in the jail. They had work programs. They had training. They had uh, church services. They had the ability to earn uh, a way to buy things, more, you know, better food and, and different things. There was ways for them to do that. There were some inmates there that were going through legal training where there was a college, um, someone there actually volunteering, helping them of how they'll go through their trial and, and teaching them things. Uh, there, so there were some really good things going on, and then there were some things that I thought were extremely disturbing. I saw filthy conditions. I saw um, solitary confinement. Uh, and these were the January 6th defendants. These were other inmates. Um, some of them were expressing and begging to get out, saying they'd been in there for months on end. And it was, it was disturbing to see that. We smelled uh, a burning smell in there that pretty much smelled like drugs. Um, but we were told, oh, they're burning their toilet paper. That's what we were told. In solitary confinement, they're burning their toilet paper. It didn't smell like burning toilet paper. It smelled like drugs. But it was towards the end of our tour... And um, we, we were being led out, and I said, hold on a minute. I haven't seen where the January 6th, pre-trial, by the way, pre-trial January 6th defendants are being kept, and I want to see them. Well, I want you to know they fought me on that. They did not want to take us back there, but I pitched a fit, and I'm pretty good at pitching a fit. <laughs> And I told them, I said, okay, you know, I'm going to leave here and I'll go directly on CNN, MSNBC. I'll go on every news station, all of them that hate me, by the way. And I'll go in on every other good one I can. And I'm going to tell them that you refuse to show me where these people are. That you showed me the whole jail, but you refuse to show me where they were. Well, that they changed their mind and, and took us down there. And that was... That was where we walked into these into the separate section, completely separate from where the rest of the population was being kept. And we went in through those open doors, and uh, I will never forget what I saw in there. And I'm sorry if if you have family members in there been through this, but they were broken souls that looked like they had thought everybody had given up on them. 
and they'd probably given up on themselves and and everything and they were just couldn't believe that they were seeing us and they broke out some of them clapping some of them crying I got a million hugs <laughs> and um, but we spent time talking with them and, and asking them questions they don't receive medical treatment many of them are denied medical treatment one of the men had a, a finger that was turned sideways from an injury that he had received on January 6 and they refused to fix his finger another man was being refused to have treatment for celiac disease another man um, an, an elderly guy his whole arm was purple and they were refusing treatment for him and they were begging me to get help for him and um, the list goes on and on many of them were saying that they don't get to see their attorneys that they're denied seeing their attorneys that they have to they have to you know because of COVID and all these rules that they have to go in solitary confinement you know for how, however many days before they're allowed to see their attorney and this the part that was shocking was it's even worse if they're not vaccinated you know it's bad enough in the jail if you're a pretrial January 6 defendant but if you're an unvaccinated pretrial January 6 defendant you're on a whole new level you're denied uh, Christian services church services communion you're denied haircuts uh, you're denied many things that are just basic human rights and that's how they were being treated and they're denied and then one of them showed me a video that he had on a laptop and I'm, I still don't understand how he had it but he did have it it was for his trial showed me a video of Rosie and Boylan and um, she was on the ground after being beaten and, and trampled and and they were giving her CPR and they were giving her CPR and there were people Capitol Police officers came and drug her away from life-saving CPR and that shocked me and and I don't want to go into the into it it's a little graphic but they pulled her away and um, I thought to myself how could they have done that and and then our understanding is she didn't receive CPR anymore after that so there was so much so many things they talked to me about and I wish I could have spent more time with them and and heard more from each of them but nine o'clock came nine o'clock came and when nine o'clock came they got very excited and and one ran and got something special he went and got an American flag and brought the American flag out and he went up on the second level and stood over the banister with the American flag and they said would you sing the national anthem with us and I said well, I'd be honored to sing the national anthem with you and I looked up at the flag and it was it was a piece of paper it wasn't a flag it was a piece of paper but it was a flag because someone had used red and blue ink and made a flag on this piece of paper that they held like this one over the banister for everyone to salute the veterans saluted and and then the rest of us put our hand over our heart and sang the national anthem and I want to tell you all something does I, most people actually I would say pretty much everyone does not sing the national anthem at nine o'clock every single night and these men who who were it being held or still are being held in the DC jail right here in this town sing the national anthem every single night at 9 p.m. with more passion and more devotion and, and just more patriotism than any one I've ever seen or heard sing the national anthem and they are being politically persecuted by Biden's Department of Justice and the Democrats but for, because of Trump and because they went in and trespassed in the Capitol now I won't defend what any of them did that day because I wasn't happy that day either but I will tell you they have a right they have due process rights they have a right to their trial they have human rights and it's all they're being abused and <clears throat> But I, I, there wasn't a dry eye in there singing the national anthem inside of a jail with people who haven't even, they didn't murder anybody, they didn't rape anybody, they didn't abuse any children, 
They, let's see, what else did they not do? They didn't burn down any businesses or loot them during BLM riots. They didn't kill anyone like police officer David Dorn. They, you know, there's a lot of things those guys didn't do, but they're, they're being held in there longer than anyone. And, and, I, and I know I'm preaching to the choir on that. And, uh, but since then, I want to tell you, since then, we wrote that report, Unusually Cruel. And anyone can read it. It's on green.house.gov. Green with an E on the end, green.house.gov. Anyone can look at the report and read it, and I urge you to do that. I know what that means. I'll tell you, it's Steve Bannon. <laughs> they call a lot, and they usually call early. So tell them to hold on a minute. Steve can wait. I've waited a ton of times for him. <laughs> So, so here's what's happening. Since then, we have requested over and over to go back in the jail, and we've been turned down. The mayor of D.C. has turned us down. The jail has turned us down. They won't even take my calls anymore. They won't even talk to me. As a matter of fact, the mayor won't let me in her office. So I, and, but here's what's tragic. There's a bunch of Republican members of Congress that want to go. So it's not just me and a few others anymore. There's a whole bunch that want to go. So I want, I want to give you that hope. And then I want to give you a little more hope before Steve comes on. And here's what I want you to know. I just left a, a meeting um, about being on oversight committee starting next year in January. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I specifically asked about the D.C. jail, okay? And I want you to know why. As a member of Congress, I am an eyewitness to what I saw in that jail. I'm also a witness to what happened on January 6th because I was inside the Capitol. I was in the House chamber when it happened. And there's even more to it. We have jurisdiction over Washington, D.C., Congress does. And Congress funds the D.C. jail. Do you understand? And my specific questions were this, is I want to question the deputy warden, Kathleen Landerkin, yes. who all over her social media, she hates President Trump. She hates white men. I don't know why. She's a white woman. She hates Republicans. She hates anyone that supports President Trump. She hates those men in that jail. And they have complained about her specifically. But they've also complained about others that work in that jail. And they need to show up and answer my questions that I have for them. Yeah, right. We also have the U.S. Marshals wrote a report and did not give a very good grade to Mayor Muriel Bowser's jail here in the town that she's supposed to be mayor of. The mayor is going to be asked to come to our committee because I have questions for her too. We have questions for Mayor Muriel Bowser, so there's going to be an investigation into the D.C. jail. I want you to know that. And that's how we look forward. We have to look forward in that way, but here's something else. Merrick Garland's Department of Justice needs to be held accountable. Yes. And, that, and Republicans are committed to doing that when we are in charge starting in January. The Department of Justice is not supposed to be the political campaign arm of the Democrat Party funded by the taxpayers. The Department of Justice is supposed to be fair, and they, are, they have a job to do, and it's not being done well. It's being done for the Democrat Party and their political enemies. And we are, we are very invested and interested in turning that around. So while it's still getting into wintertime and it's still dark, just listen, things can change and things can turn around because like I started with, it's just like the land of Narnia and the ice is beginning to melt and the snow is beginning to melt. So hold on just a little bit longer and know that the country is praying for you all and, and we really want to straighten this out. So thank you so much, everyone. Congresswoman Green, you're a patriot and a hero to us all, so thank you so much. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And I see, I gave a shout out to Taylor and Dom, but they, they get credit for bringing Patriot Freedom Project onto pre President Trump's radar last March. So thank you guys. Okay, so we're going to have the great uh, Patriot of the Year, Steve Bannon, speak shortly, but just for a minute or two, we actually have a surprise. Um, there are several of these January 6th defendants who are in jail who just called in and want to say a few words to you all. So would you guys please come up with the families come up? Uh, we're going to have uh, Bannon uh, in five minutes, and we're going to have some prisoners share their experiences very quickly live from the D.C. jail. All right, Robert, go ahead. Ready to go? Yep. Nice and a little louder. All right. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Robert Abraham Morse. I'm an Airborne Ranger, a Penn State grad, a high school history teacher, and since June 11th of 2021, I have been an American political prisoner. Since June of last year, I have endured a gruesome amount of pain and loss due to my dismal circumstances. Nevertheless, I have consistently endeavored to do everything in my power to remain physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight against the overwhelming odds. I have continually oriented myself to utilize this chapter of incarceration to make self-improvement the outcome from this experience. I insist to envision that I'm not in a 30 by 30 concrete box, but a university, a monastery, a redemption chamber. I refuse to submit to my environment and circumstances so that I am built from this experience, not broken. I intend to honor my father and my mother with my actions, especially my incredible Mama Llama, who's there with you today, who has gone above and beyond to help me through this present dark. I want to also extend a big thank you to Cynthia Hughes and the Patriot Freedom Project for all they've done for me. Their rescuing efforts have been an enormous blessing to me. I also want to highlight the phenomenal and selfless contributions I have received from across the country through mail, donations, and prayer. I am grateful for all that has been done on my behalf. Now, for all that are listening, I want to declare that justice will indeed prevail because of our enduring integrity, because of our indomitable desire to do good unto others, because of our decision to consistently embody optimism in the face of a challenge, because of our employment of an unstoppable work ethic to see these days renewed, and ultimately because of how great our God is. Amen. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you.
This is only temporary. Keep being strong, and I'll be home before you know it. And to everyone out there today that keeps speaking on our behalf, from presidential to Congress to the legal teams, all the way down to the backbone and the foundation of this great country, our everyday American patriots, I want to thank you from the depths of my soul for never giving up on us and continuing to fight each and every day for what's right. It means the world to us and lets us know we are not and will not be forgotten. I love each and every one of you and can't wait to meet you. My name is Jordan Robert Mink, and even though I'm a political prisoner in the capital of my own country, I still am and always will be proud to be an American. Thank you. We're going to pause. We've got to ask um, Barry, and we got to ask Jose to call back in about 15 minutes because Bannon has to speak or we'll lose him. Okay. Babe, you can try. 15 minutes. I'm sorry. Steve's going to try. 15, 15, 15, 20 minutes just to be safe. 20 minutes to be safe. Yes. Sorry. He can call me if he wants to. Okay. Paging Joanna Miller, paging Joanna Miller. So, okay. Okay, okay. I gotta make I gotta make my favorite proud. My favorite is on the screen. Um, most of you know our next guest, who hosts a show called War Room. Um, Stephen K. Bannon helped President Trump to victory in 2016 as CEO of the 2016 Trump campaign. He served as chief strategist to President Trump in the White House, was executive chairman of Breitbart News, and faithfully served our country in the military as an officer in the U.S. Navy. Thank you, Steve. Steve Bannon has a major reason as to why Patriot Freedom Project has gained so much traction. I will be forever grateful for his support. He is the great one, as I call him, and my favorite. Being one of our earliest advocates, he helped us raise over $1 million in support of the January 6 prisoners and mostly their families. Steve, I could never say a million thank yous enough times. And I will be forever grateful for your support and for your help and for your mentorship. And I appreciate you for being with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, uh, time out, Steve. We can't hear you yet. Joe? Are you on mute, Steve? Steve's not on mute. It says your speaker is muted on the screen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. 
Okay, we'll mute it. Yep. Okay. All right, go for it. Ready? I'll, I'm gonna mute it right now. Yes, yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help right now. Okay. Can you just start speaking? Yes, because I'm in front of 100 people. Yeah, yeah. Just on the phone. Just on the phone. Yes, on the phone. Just can you, can you, can you speak my phone? I'm sorry. I can't please speak my phone, please, instead. We're going to end up using this, okay? Yeah. Yes, yes, you're, you're on. Can you speak my phone? I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me? Yes, right here. All right. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I'm sorry, everybody. Okay, Steve, the floor is yours. Just gonna keep you. Jo Joanna, let's. Yeah. Okay, we're we're good for you. It's just gonna it's just gonna keep doing that audio thing. We fixed it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get them up and then I'm gonna call back and then we can test the audio real quick if you want to do that or keep going on with we, everything we, else. We could go on with, with this call right now because we hear you fine. We have you hooked up to the microphone here. Everybody hears you. No, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna run into that again. Okay. It's okay. Okay. When when do you wanna call back? I I don't know. I I don't know. because I, I it's not working on there. He'll just speak into I'll see if he can just speak into the phone then. But no more uh, Skype. Okay. He's just gonna keep doing that. So can we can we continue with the call with Steve? Here, one second. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll grab him. You ready? Yes. Perfect. There you go. That was stupid. You're set. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I'm not there in person, and uh, sorry we couldn't get the Skype to work, but that often happens. Listen, um, I I'm very honored uh, to have been a part of all this since Cynthia reached out to me. And, and you know, you got Cynthia Hughes, you got Rachel Semmel, you have Joanna Miller, you have Ed Martin, you have some of the best people that I've ever met in Washington uh, that are have really come together and pulled together to set this up. But what's most important, I think, is that what you have represented to the nation and, and your and your husbands. The, the way you've gone through this, the way you've conducted yourself, the way you've comported yourself, I think has been a, um, a tremendous um, example to the nation of how to go through hard times. You guys have had two incredibly hard years. It's been hard on you financially. It's been hard on you spiritually. It's been hard on your children. Um, here in the Christmas season, uh, particularly the Advent season leading up to the birth of Christ, I think that uh, it's no better time to, for us to say thank you, to thank you of how you've conducted yourself and been an example. Marjorie Taylor Greene walked through all the politics of it. And obviously the politics of all this are going to change pretty dramatically with the new Congress, and that's all to come. And you've got very sophisticated people like, you know, Rachel and, and, and Joanna and uh, and Ed and others that will help to shepherd this through. And you have a real true warrior in Marjorie Taylor Greene who has sacrificed a lot to be in the forefront of this and taken a lot of arrows. But, you know, what I want to say is how you've conducted yourself, the example you've set of how you've comported yourself over the last two years since the incident. Um, I think is a, a shining example of uh, the grittiness and toughness and steely resolve of the American people. And I want to thank you, Cynthia, for allowing me to be part of this. Uh, you guys know I've always got your back. Uh, the War Room, and particularly the, the vast audience of the War Room, uh, is always there for you guys. And like I said, things are going to change, I think, pretty dramatically. Come the new Congress and, uh, of course, President Trump's backing. And so uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. But I just want to thank you uh, so much for uh, having me as part of this, the little bit we've been able to do, and uh, and to invite me to, to speak tonight. And uh, Merry Christmas to everybody.
Merry Christmas, Steve, and we thank you very much for your support, always. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas. So we have, you know, we have Rebecca's husband. Mm -hmm. That's right. So all right, so now at this point of the evening, before we share a very special video message and a great documentary trailer, we're going to invite the families up right now. Um, we have two more prisoners on the line. We're going to have some families share about their experiences. And then we have a very special video message um, from a very special 2024 candidate. And it's not Nikki Haley, I can just tell you that. I, I just want to say to the, the kids, Santa Claus is here, and uh, feel free to go over and chat with him and tell him your, uh, your Christmas list and your Christmas wishes, and uh, I think he might have a couple of things up his sleeves that he might be handing out very soon. So uh, if you would like to go visit with Santa, he's waiting to see you. I'd like to bring up Rebecca, Lexi, Desiree, Angela, Sharon, Trish, Amanda, Andrea, and Joe. Hurricane, I won't say your name, but do you want to come up? Come on now, girl. Put your bag on. I'm not going to take up, you know, a lot of time because um, I would rather you hear from these incredible people standing behind me. Um, but I've had the, the the honor and the privilege of getting to know these families that you see behind me. Um, they have let me into their homes. They have let me interact with their children. They have opened up their hearts to me. Um, I am 24-7 available, available to them. I get calls in the middle of the night. I get calls early in the morning. I get calls late at night. I am there for all of them whenever they need me, and they know that. And this is just a handful. Um, we, we here at Patriot Freedom Project, we have supported and helped a ton of families, um, well into the hundreds. And, um, um, and, and these are the ones that I was able to bring here, and uh, I would like for you to hear some of their heartbreak and some of their stories. I think it's very important that people that are here in this room and those that are watching the live streams hear what's really going on and where the real collateral damage lies. So please welcome the families of January 6th. Hello. <coughs> My name is Joe Jenkins. <coughs> I'm here to talk. Can I, can I just take this off? Thanks. I'm here to talk about Rachel Powell. <coughs> the pink hat lady. You probably heard about her. <laughs> but I want to preface this with something I'm going to tell you that nobody has, nobody else here will be able to tell you. <coughs> You're looking at a former lifelong Democrat, past tense. Sooner or later, we grow up. Not only was I a Democrat and voted Democrat my entire life, I actually thought that Democrats were not progressive enough, and I joined the Green Party. I actually established the Green Party in my county in Pennsylvania, Benango County. That has all changed. <clears throat> I'm one of the converts. The only people I trust anymore are the Republicans, the Libertarians, and the Conservatives. Over the last several years, it should be obvious to all of you why that has occurred. Unfortunately, most of my friends <laughs> haven't followed suit. But nevertheless, uh, I have a good friend, Rachel Powell. She's, uh, we have a lot in common. She's an organic gardener. She has, she raises chickens. She sells eggs. She, she sold organic goat cheese at a farmer's market. That's what she was doing. She delivered organic produce to households for a living. She 
delivered to my business. She delivered to my, my kid's house. Her and her daughter, Ada here, who's sitting in the middle, middle table there. <clears throat> Rachel is a, a, a yoga enthusiast. She's a crunchy, organic person, like me. Our kids were born at home. My kids, her kids. We homeschooled. My kids, her, her kids. That's Rachel Powell. She has eight children. She has six grandchildren. One was born last week. Rachel Powell is now a terrorist in the United States. Rachel Powell tried to overthrow the U.S. government according to the Biden Department of Justice. Rachel Powell is facing the rest of her adult life in prison for protesting election fraud on January 6th. Thanks to the Democrat Party, which I no longer have anything to do with. Now, nobody's talking about the election fraud, the election fraud in 2020. Why not? If there was no election fraud, let's see the so-called evidence cast it aside and move on. But they will not allow that evidence to be presented because it's factual evidence. Anybody who's seen the 2000 Mules documentary? Anybody who's seen uh, the real facts of January 6th put out by Epoch? Uh, knows what is really going on. So uh, I don't want to use up all my time here. I'm going to pass this on. But anyway, don't get me all riled up now. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank I, I just, uh, you know, had to get a few things in there. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. So before we move on to the other family members, um, we have, do we have anybody on the phone? We have uh, Barry Ramey from the Northern Neck Virginia Jail. Um, and we're going to hear a few words from Barry. Hey, Barry, it's Cynthia. Hey, Barry. Go ahead, Barry. Uh, hey, Barry. It's Cynthia. Yes, we can all hear you. Oh, okay, awesome. Sorry, cut out there for a minute. Sorry. How's it going? It's going great. Okay. We got about two minutes with you. Okay, well, it's good to uh, have this platform and meet the American people. Um, I'm very grateful for all of this. Uh, I'm find myself currently incarcerated at uh, Warsaw, in Warsaw, the Northern Neck Regional Jail. A lot of the individuals from D.C. that have been here have said this place is worse than the Gulag by far. Um, I can't contest the other side, but uh, uh, without getting too much into detail about my case, because I'm pre-trial, I, um, I want to say why I went up to the Capitol that day. And uh, I went up for one reason and one reason only. I see it as what some people may call self-appointed vigilanteism. I consider my, my God-given right to stand up for women, children, and vulnerable elderly. And that's what I intended to do that day. Uh, if, uh, if people from the far left came out to attack protesters leaving the rally, I fully intended on defending them. Uh, that didn't happen. And never in a million years did I, did I predict that was what was going to happen did happen. Um, and uh, to say the least, you know, it, uh, it, was, it was a hell of a day. Um, I, uh, the narrative that's being told about us, what's going on, is completely egregious on many different levels. Uh, I had the luxury of meeting lots of good men that love their country, that believe in America and the Constitution. And that's why they were there that day. And I share that comment with all of them. Uh, I want to say to all of you that uh, right now we do have an issue going on in our country where our First Amendment right is under attack. And I think a lot of the J6 cases do represent that. And it goes far beyond us. Uh, the censorship that's happening on social media with conservative ideals, uh, what we see going on at Twitter and uh, abroad it is, is completely inappropriate and it's against everything that our founding fathers that worked so diligently hard to build this great nation represented and I, um, I, I want to thank each and every one of you that are in tune to the situation, that are in tune to the political atmosphere that's around them that continue to support us and care about us, care about this country You're, you are unfortunately the last of a dying breed and to the patriots out there and the proud Americans that love that 
flag and would never kneel, would only support it, would get enraged to see it burn, I'm speaking to you. Because, uh, again, you are the last of a dying breed. And if we do not start representing what we feel on our side and do not start, and do not stop and start standing up for our First Amendment rights to say what we need to say, um, we're going to lose this. We're going to lose this great nation. And um, people like John Adams and Benjamin Franklin and uh, George Washington that, that worked so hard on, the, on our Constitution uh, from, from the people they looked into, like John Locke and Cicero, um, Hey, Barry, we got we got to move it along, Barry. I'm sorry, honey, but we got to move it along. Do you have any uh, last uh, comments that you would like to tell everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm uh, I'm I'm in a situation where I'm trying to uh, fund my case to take it to trial in February. If there's anybody out there that's uh, willing to help me, my give send go is give send go forward slash Barry Ramey. Um, I would greatly appreciate anything. And with the 8.7 inflation rating, if you can't donate, if you can just share it for me. I'm relying on we the people, and that's you. So thank you so much for this platform. Thank you, Barry. Do you have Jose? Not yet? Okay. Do you want to say a few words? Hi, everyone. My name is Lexi. Um, here today with me is my son, Rari. Oh, all off close and personal. And my mother-in-law, uh, Liz Mink. Our loved one is Jordan Mink. Um, so Jordan has been held in the D.C. jail for two years as a pretrial detainee uh, with no visitations, no video call visits to even watch his son grow. Um, we thank God every day for giving us the strength to endure in this trying time. Sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> Jordan wants nothing more than to be home with us and to continue to make his music. I would love to shout out the Patriot Freedom Project for having us here today and the continued love and support that they always have meeting the needs of the wives and our children of our political prisoners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. <laughs> All right. Des, you want to say a quick thing? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, my name is Desiree Rowland, and we just heard from my fiance, Barry Ramey, and I want to thank you all for being here and supporting us and, and all the J6ers. Um, it is a very difficult time to sit at home and watch him not get medical, medical attention, not get proper uh, treatment, um, be charged with egregious charges, and not just uh, looking at our case, but all the cases across the J6ers. And this is in complete abomination of our freedom as far as I'm concerned. And I am very grateful for all of you who are here to stand up and stand with us in this fight because it is a fight for our country. So thank you very much. My name is Rebecca Padilla. I have three boys, Ethan, Matthew, and Gabriel are in the crowd. My husband is Joseph Padilla. He's been in Washington. Mm. <laughs> My bad. He's been in Washington, D.C. for 22 months. By the time he goes to trial, it'll be 27 months that we have not seen. My husband and my boys have not seen their father. <sighs> I promise I wasn't going to cry. Um, without Freedom Patri Patriot Freedom Project, we would have not been able to do this and I am forever grateful to this amazing woman because she is awesome and she is a goddess. I love you. Miss Trish, come on now. I'll stand with you. I'm extremely emotional tonight. I just want to thank you so much for everything you've done. It's been incredibly difficult for 
everybody here, including myself and Chris, what they've done to us, what they're continuing to do to us, it's not fair, it's not right, and we need to stand up and fight, and we're going to. That's right. Thank you so much for everything you've done. We really, truly appreciate you. Thank we you. appreciate Marjorie Taylor Greene, yes. Julie Kelly, Donald Trump, everyone that has spoken out. There aren't enough of them that are speaking out. Right. I'm in, from Florida. No one in Florida, Governor DeSantis hasn't reached out to us. Say that again. Governor DeSantis has not reached out to us. Our local representatives, nothing. Nobody has helped us. We need help. Please and thank you very much for your support. Really appreciate you. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. We see you. Angela. Well, we got to hear from my son, and I really appreciate that. Um, I only want to take a moment. And again, like the other families, I greatly want to thank Cynthia Hughes for everything she does. I see what she does and I think, how, how does she do it? I would never be able to. And um, I know that my son is in a better place because of the Patriot Freedom Project. And um, I could tell you a little bit more about my son, but I don't know if that would be able to help other people. And I know that people in America are watching tonight and that's a great message I want you to hear, is that the Patriot Freedom Project is a real thing, and there are more J6ers out there, more families that need your help. And um, I, I hope that resonates with the American people. Thank you. Oh, no, I don't know about that. My name is Sharon Caldwell. My husband, Thomas Caldwell, uh, is a falsely accused and totally innocent January 6th defendant. He uh, is one of the luckier ones because after 53 days in jail, 49 days in solitary confinement for crimes he did not commit, he was released to home arrest. Um, he's been on home arrest for approximately 19 months, so I am lucky in that sense. He was unlucky in the sense that uh, he was charged with seditious conspiracy this past January, as well as other conspiracy charges, one of the more major charges in this craziness, um, of which he's also totally innocent. And it's extremely offensive and insulting for a 20-year retired lieutenant commander from the U.S. Navy who loves this country more than anything, who sacrificed his health and his life and his time and has given so much to this country to be charged with such a ridiculous a charge it's 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 there's no there are no words for it so uh, many of you may know that his eight week long trial just ended this past week and on Tuesday evening or late afternoon uh, the verdict was handed down we we feel that it was a win for us he was found not guilty of seditious conspiracy he was found <laughs> he he was found not guilty not guilty of two other major conspiracy charges um, he, he, they did find him guilty of two lesser charges, of which he is actually totally innocent. I'm confident he will be acquitted of those as well in time. Uh, it was a win. I hope that it will become more the norm than the exception. Uh, we're going to continue to fight. We will not give up. We're going to keep chipping away and chipping away. But we all need to stick together and help each other. And I had a we have an amazing attorney. And through the Patriot Freedom Project and, and Cynthia Hughes, all of the J6 defendants need attorneys. This is what she does. She raises money to help people get good attorneys, which are so hard to find. Attorneys that have the courage and the knowledge and the skill and that want to help these people. So please, we need trial attorneys. We need appellate attorneys. If you're out there, please, please get in touch with Cynthia and volunteer or, or, or you know, talk to her about, about helping these people because they need your help. Thank you. Before we move to um, Andrea and uh, Haley, we have um, Jose Padilla, who is a political prisoner in D.C. Gitmo. Hey, Jose, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Ms. Cindy, and I want to thank all of you there for, uh, for being there and showing the support you've been showing. I also want to thank, uh, personally, Cindy and the Patriot Freedom Project for 
all the help they've given, not just my family, but uh, me in uh, getting me a uh, lawyer and uh, everything else they've done. They, they are just an amazing uh, program. Uh, what I'd like to talk about today, though, is uh, the fact that, you know, we've, we've won the House, and uh, now we're going to have uh, some committees. And I would like to encourage all of you to put, you know, have your friends call your Congress people. Uh, this is a political prosecution, and we need to have as much pressure as possible on, you know, uh, Jim Jordan, if he's the uh, chairman of the House uh, Judiciary Committee, to uh, investigate the DOJ's uh, treatment of us. Uh, just going through, uh, you know, case law here in D.C., I've found civil cases uh, that are uh, from BLM protesters suing, like, the, the Metro PD. And in the uh, case, in the background of the case, it mentions that these uh, protesters were no paper. In other words, the, uh, the uh, United States attorney decided not to press charges on them. Um, there's also uh, the climate protests on the 11th and 12th and 13th of 2021. They rioted in front of the White House, attacked, uh, you know, uniformed uh, officers. It looked very much like what happened on Jan 6, but these people received uh, tickets. So, you know, the, the political prosecution is near and dear to my heart. It's an issue that I want to see uh, gone because no person should be imprisoned because of their political beliefs or their speech. Uh, the sedition convictions just earlier this week were based in part on protecting speech, which, uh, I mean, if they can do it to them, they can do it to anyone else. Hey, baby. Uh, yes. <laughs> I love you, but you're carrying on again. <laughs> We got to wrap you uh, up, Jose. Do you have any final okay. final comments? Uh, no, just thank you. Uh, do you uh, need to speak to Pete Schwartz? Yeah, I know. Hey, you're. All right, uh, I'll put him. I'll put him on after me. But thank you. You want to say hi to your boys? He, he already got off the phone. Hello, everybody. Hey, Pete. Yes, ma'am. I got to burden you, my friend. You got to call back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to do it to you. Um, All right. Give us, uh, give us about, honestly, give us about 45 minutes. We have a few, we have a speaker to come up. Um, and call back on uh, Rebecca, on Jose's wife's phone, or Jordan's wife, okay? Okay, we will do. All right, Pete. Thank you very much for understanding. Oh, no problem. <laughs> All right. Talk All soon. Bye-bye. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Andrew, we have one more. Yep. Hi, my name is Andrea Young. My husband is Kyle Young, who has recently been tried and sentenced. He is currently serving a over seven year sentence and he will miss his children growing up. It's really been hard on our family. I'm trying to be a mother and a father. That's not what I signed up for. My husband's a good man. He's a hard worker. He's a wonderful father. And they got it all wrong what was going on that day with him. And he had no opportunity to tell his side. <laughs> Thank you. Well, since I'm crying, we'll just keep talking. Uh, same way with uh, Andrea. He was, uh, my name is Amanda, uh, and my loved one is Albuquerque. We have three beautiful girls. Uh, he was tried and convicted and uh, got an eight-year sentence. Uh, just like Andrea, it's so hard trying to be mom and dad, as you can tell while I was trying to stand up here before. Um, it's just so trying. The girls, every, like we come up here, Victor, or, uh, Virginia thinks that we're going to see Daddy every time, so it's so hard with him being young. And we just want Daddy home because he's good, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. 
thank you. Thank you, everybody, for telling your story. I love you all. And we have one other family, but she doesn't want to speak. So, all right. Thank you. I'd like to introduce somebody who I've gotten to know a little bit, and uh, I think he is an outstanding human, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about him. His name is Alex Brusewitz, and he's a leading conservative political consultant who advises members of Congress, the Senate, former White House political appointees, and other major conservative leaders on public policy and political strategy. He also is the founder of his political consulting firm, X Strategies. X Strategies has consulted dozens of political campaigns, resulting in a high success rate come on election day. He also happens to be directing a documentary about the Patriot Freedom Project to share stories like the ones you just heard and on January 6th defendants and their families and grossly weaponized Department of Justice. Alex, too, has fallen victim to the Department of Justice and the hoax January 6th committee. So I'd like to ask Alex to please come forward. How great is Cynthia Hughes? Like so many of you, after the 2020 election, I had a lot of questions about what took place. I think as Americans, we have the right to ask questions and we have the right for answers. Isn't that correct? Yes. And so as, you know, as weeks and months went on and, and the transparency wasn't offered, I too was incredibly frustrated. And I was in January, I was at the Ellipse rally on January the 6th. Uh, protesting peacefully and patriotically as President Trump asked for. And I had no idea what, what that day would have turned out to be. And as, you know, we watched the, the footage at the Capitol, uh, we were all disheartened. We were all concerned about what was going on. We were concerned for our country. We obviously uh, were caught up in emotions and, and we saw our police officers getting attacked. And, you know, for, for about nine months I was incredibly silent on that day because I didn't even know what to make of it or, or what to think. And, uh, but something came over me after listening to, to some of these stories and hearing of, from the family of you know, Ashley Babbitt and some of these other um, these individuals and I started recognizing that there probably wasn't, there, there was another side to the story that the media wasn't telling us. And so I started following people like Julie Kelly of American Greatness and Darren Beatty of Revolver News, and God bless Tucker Carlson for giving them platforms. And so in early January, I reached out to Julie and I said, I would like to be generous and, and make a contribution to help an organization that I know is going to help these families who are struggling. And she said, Alex, there's only one organization that comes to mind, and it's the Patriot Freedom Project. And so after I made the contribution, like clockwork, just days later, I get an email from a committee that you might have heard of called the January 6th Committee. Boo. They say, Alex, we think you have information related to January 6th. It's been a year. A year, the largest manhunt in American history. They don't talk to me for a year, but the day after I make a contribution to help you guys, Alex, come before the committee, we summon you. And so I went on Tucker Carlson, I politely asked the committee to go to hell. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what we're up, they, what, they don't want your stories to get out. They don't want people to support you. People who do step up to support you, they try to intimidate, they try to break, they try to beat, 
I can promise you they got a fight and you know a fighter in me they're not going to have too much luck but it's not just supporters financial supporters it's also attorneys you know after the 2020 election the justice department the media they beat up on attorneys who want to take a look at election fraud they said you'll never work again in politics same exact situation is happening here with your family so many attorneys good attorneys refuse to touch your cases I privately hear from them they say oh thank you guys for what you're doing we have your back 100 percent I say why don't you say that up front why don't you be public about it but they're terrified because they're not going to get jobs and it's a really a sick process which going on and so I, I applaud attorneys like Ed Martin and my friend Joseph McBride who I've met through this process who took me before the January 6th committee who with me told them to go to hell it was a good time but I'd like to give Joe an opportunity to say a couple words because uh, without him and, and without the work that you guys are doing, uh, one, I wouldn't have heard any of your heartbreaking stories, and we're going to do what we can to tell your stories now. Uh, but God bless you for what you guys are doing. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for your patriotism and support. Thank you, Cynthia Hughes. Uh, who I affectionately call the Mama of J6, um, for all your wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, my clients would have never gotten uh, their, uh, the fight that we've been putting forth for them without you, and uh, your continued support is uh, very much looked forward to, very, very much depended on, and we're very, very grateful for it. As uh, some of you may or may not know, I will make this very, very quick. I became an attorney because my brother Anthony was wrongfully convicted of a crime that he did not commit in 2015. Uh, he was sentenced to 15 years of incarceration. I was involved in the mixed martial arts world at the time. I did not have a college degree. I don't even think I could do long division or fractions, to tell you the truth. But after my brother was convicted and I watched my mother and father's heartbreak, I said to myself that I had to do something. So I got off the sideline, I prayed to God, and I committed myself to becoming a lawyer so I could help get him out of jail. It took me 10 years to become a lawyer. Uh, by the time I was done, my brother had maxed out on the sentence. I never got to help him. But I am grateful for the experience in my life because my brother is home and I get to help people like you. I know what it's like to be a family member. I know what it's like to watch my mother and father's heart break. My words to you tonight are for you to not give up, to always remember that God is not abandoned. God will never abandon you, nor will he, nor will he ever abandoned this country. Amen. Don't underestimate yourself. I was a, a scrappy fighter from Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, and I figured out a way to make a difference because I believed, and I had a mom and dad who supported me and believed in me too. There are many of you in this room tonight who may, be feel, who may feel called to greatness. If you feel that call, honor it. Alex Brusewitz is a great friend of mine. I'm honored to represent him. Um, he's a staunch defender of President Trump. Nobody in this country in terms of business has suffered more than President Donald J. Trump. A 45 will be 47. And at some point in the, in the future, I encourage you to vote for Alex Brusewitz for president when he runs. God bless you all. Alex, you're such a nice young lad. In the words of Joe McBride. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much. So now um, I'd like to present to you a documentary that um, I've been working on with some of the families and, um, and my, my great friend, Alex Brusewitz. He's an incredible director and producer. Um, and I love my Danny, wherever you are. And um, I really thank them for helping with us. And uh, I hope you are moved by this trailer.
I want to say something really quick before we move to the next video. When I called the families up here before, and, the, and those of you that are in this room that know Jerry Perna is with us, there's a reason I didn't call Jerry up with the families. And uh, you're gonna hear from Jerry and the heartbreak of her family before the end of this night. We're gonna show you a video, a very uh, important video. And uh, we're gonna take a little break and we're gonna let the kids visit with Santa. and. Uh, and then you're going to hear some, some words from Jerry Perna. Um, so that was an excellent um, trailer. Oh, up close and personal. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, is it this? Yeah. 
All right, so great job, Alex. Um, so right now we have a very special surprise. Um, as you all know, um, I work for President Trump at Save America PAC, our 45th and 47th President of the United States. And he has taken the time um, not only to meet with Cynthia and support the Patriot Freedom Project, but he has a very special message that he's going to share with you. He recorded it and he sent it um, because, you know, we wanted to address the families and let, let America know that he is on your side. So without further ado, all right, here it is.